Wade Keller called the WCW hotline over the weekend and confirmed a common complaint that callers have, which is there are too many stages to go through before you can listen to what you call for. Certainly stalling the callers by having them work through three selection menus and several reviews and small talk makes WCW more money per caller, but may turn away more callers than it's worth. Okay. The framing makes it seem like, even though it says it doesn't say outright that this is a recent development, right? It's common complaints. That's all it says. I mean, it, I would because so you have what appears to be a recent change to the WCW hotline to make it more scammy. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hill, like we talked about earlier, who are they trying to push into retirement? The Very guy well. in charge of the WCW hotline, Lance <laughs> Russell. Oh, Lance Russell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know what the big deal is. I took the fucking 800 number that Tommy Noe gave me and I dialed <laughs> it and I entered the fucking right mailbox number for where they recorded the messages and I listened to them for free on the payphone in high school and I was courteous enough to not record over them even though I easily could have and I okay, think it was so Arn Anderson saying? that gave the code away to everybody that we were all listening for free. <laughs> it was who they gave it away? Arn. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I think Arn gave it to Cornette, who gave it to Tommy. No, you gave it to me. No, what I was going to say. And I and I clearly gave it to all of my fucking columnists of the re- outside interference newsletter. So, there you go. dude, I I I I have I have come across wrestling fans at shows that came up to me and said, "West Interactive Audio System, you had the code too. So did I, dude." Thousands of people had this code, and they could have easily <laughs> recorded over me and Gene's fucking hotline or whatever the fuck if we wanted to. But we were courteous enough to – we did not do so because we wanted to hear the hotline for free. Um, so I don't know what they're talking about. Well, you about just blew my people mind when you said that, 99 cents a minute. Who gets charged 99 cents a minute? A bunch of assholes. That's who. So, okay. yeah. so you had the Observer backdoor, right, that Georgie Ann gave to people, didn't you? No, I, I, I had the WCW backdoor. That's oh, you it. never had the Observer backdoor. Okay, because no. I don't think people who had the Observer backdoor were given the ability to record over messages. I think that no, was just like, an 800 backdoor to listen to the hotline. Like the, the the backdoor that we had for WCW was like like what you do. You call into a, a, an 800 number, you put in a passcode, and then you enter a ma- like a, uh, a mailbox number, I guess, is what, what you do. But like – to re- okay, if you are – say you're mean Gene Okerlund you're going to record your outgoing message, you enter mailbox 110 pound, and then it's like to record a message, press 1. To fucking listen to the message, press 2. So we all just press 2 to listen to his update. He presses 1 to update and records over it. We had the – bit like whatever whatever code we were given, we could have taped over the shit. But we didn't like it was complicated enough that you had to know the three digit code for that mailbox to record the outgoing message to actually reach the fucking hotline. But I could have easily at during my fucking lunch break at fucking in freshman year of high school, I could have recorded. Yeah, I think the WWF's way better than WCW, bro. And Arn Anderson sucks. And I could have had that be the outgoing message by pressing the pound key and hanging up and going to my next class. (laughs) But I didn't because I wanted to listen to the WCW hotline for free. If some of that happened with today's generation, oh, they would have recorded over that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, somebody would have done it. Yeah, uh, we had but, more. But we definitely we got, to, we absolutely got to the point where maybe a year and a half later, uh, myself and a couple of the other people that I knew that had the fucking code that was calling into this 800 number. So clearly, if you're calling an 800 number, they have your phone number on record as <laughs> dialing in to the 800 number. They called each of us and were like, hey, uh, yeah, you've been calling into something that you are not authorized to be fucking calling in. So unless you want to get your ass sued, you're going to stop fucking calling. Yeah, that's like, not something they could sue you for. I know, but 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 they were all, but they. I mean, obviously, we were. Was it someone from Western Audio, or was it someone from WCW? It. I don't know. Like it was. It was a message that they left on my fucking. That's why you call from a different. You call from a phone that's not your. Right, right. Usually, I would call from a payphone at school. 
So I wouldn't call from my own, but well, I did. Uh, but but the thing was, I did call from home. So like one day on my answering machine, I got like, "Hey, yeah, you've been calling into this, and you're not supposed to. So I'd suggest that you stop, unless you want some fucking legal ramifications." Or whatever. And, I, and that spooked me enough to just stop calling. So Joe Petticino had a uh, a hotline with the Atlanta newspaper in the uh, during the Monday Night Wars, the early part of it. And that was a and, 976, right? No, that was a, a 511. And, um, but was it pay or just? Yeah, computer? you had to pay. Okay, it was, yeah. but it was like the 40 cents a call type pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I, would, I would call it at work. <laughs> I used to, I used <laughs> when to other people are job. paying for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I would listen to it. <laughs> on my job but but here's the thing we weren't just listening okay all right so 110 was fucking gene Oakland or whatever 120 was somebody it was you know fucking steve beverly whoever the fuck was uh, you know, Miss, missy hyatt mark madden whoever but you could have put in any fucking code like you could have put nine six seven three two pound and recorded in mailbox nine six seven three two <laughs> so what we did this was okay. I had the password, and th if you go back and look at the old uh, RSPW archive, if you go in, people can go back and search that probably through Google somehow. Um, it, it came out eventually that we were like myself and Tommy and a couple other, just like some of my other columnists, like Bill Strong from Connecticut. We would instead of at the time placing long distance phone calls to each other to exchange information and obviously long distance phone calls at that point in time was you know 10 bucks if i want to fucking call this guy and talk to him for an hour on the phone not like it is today uh instead of doing that we would record like hotline me like we would record messages just we would, like like we on one of the unused codes <laughs> On the West Interactive <laughs> Audio System. That's amazing. We're like, okay, I'm going to record a message for Bill Strong. He's going to call in, enter 97635, whatever, and listen to it. And then when he's done listening to it, he'll record over it with a message back to me. So we could record, we could correspond with each other for fucking free through WCW's fucking hotline system. <laughs> And yeah, we don't have to pay for long distance. I mean, we'd still call each other, other, you know, once a week or whatever. But in the meantime, we could trade messages. Record. So we were doing that, and they probably figured out why are there recordings on all of these other number combinations that have absolutely nothing to do with the hotline. And then they listen to it and they're like, "What the fuck is this?" And there was someone who had the password. <laughs> Jeez, I don't even remember that it went on this long. Somebody who had the code, it was probably like 95, 90, probably 95, uh, who was, this was the, me <laughs> this was the message that was recorded. And it was somebody, and I don't, I still to this day don't know who it was, but it was someone who had the fucking code that recorded a message that went to an ECW show and was recording a message for another ECW person to listen to. And he said the following, hello, it's hello there. What, what's up there, Goldfarb? I am, uh, I, I've been in the locker room and I hide behind doors and I do backflips and nobody knows that I'm there. And I see that they are wearing lingerie in the locker room. There is lingerie in the locker room and they don't know that I'm there, Goldfarb. <laughs> hello. Can you hear me? And then they like hang up and we're like, who the fuck was that? It's like somebody's doing somebody's doing backflips and he's talking to someone named Goldfarb who's talking about lingerie in the locker room. Is that an ECW? They're fucking hardcore. And I, I guarantee <laughs> listener and previous host Chris Wilcox heard the lingerie in the locker room and we have talked about gold farb <laughs> and trying to figure out who the back flipper was that was that saw the lingerie in the locker room but this was all on the WCW the West Interactive Audio System WIAS which we would call the wise ass because it's WIAS the wise ass and uh yeah
I don't we don't know who it is. I thought it was somebody named Travis Edgeworth, who we heard another message from at some point. Uh, who was like out of the Baltimore area, maybe maybe new Chad Austin, but we have never oh, got God. past that. And it is now 2019. We still haven't solved the uh, mystery of back flipper and the luxury. <laughs> Go farm. Oh, oh my god. Okay, so I uh I did some Google group searching. <laughs> Nothing from this period, oh. but we do have subject. Tanay reports Benoit on Raw. Though this will not go up for, on most of your lists until after the show, I thought I'd throw out that Mike Tanay reports on his WCW hotline message for June 5th, and this is from 95. That there is, quote, serious talk that Chris Benoit will appear on the June 5th live edition of Monday Night Raw. We shall see, dot, dot, dot. He also reported that last week's edition of Raw did a 3.9, the highest ever, sign, DP, then signature, all caps, Dave Prizak, yeah, FBS, right. and then it deletes most of your email address, dot, 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 at prodigy.com. At prodigy.com, yes. Do you remember what your signature was at this time? Uh, it's probably something to do with Tammy Sitch. No? Vaguely. <laughs> Quote, I'm much, uh, much, I'm much, bigger, much bigger than, than Shawn Michaels. Michaels. Chris, Chris Candido, Candido, November 26, yes. 1994. <laughs> yeah. Candido and Tammy uh, hosted the uh, Cable Access Year in Review show, and that was one of the outtakes, was him talking about how he's bigger than Shawn Michaels. And he, yeah, Tammy liked Shawn Michaels. Whatever. What, I'm not going to. Not gonna say anything more. She's probably in jail right now. I don't know. She or do might you want hear a sky this. Chat? Or she may be on Skype with us. She may be on Skype. I don't know. There, <laughs> if you also search the fucking RSPW, uh, it eventually came out once. Once Tom, there was okay. There was a. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even say it. All right, I'll say it anyway. This is on top of my head, and it happened. <laughs> Might as well say it. Uh, there was a uh, fucking April Fool's Day, April first, one of these years. And I recorded a message to Tommy Noe making some shit up about how somebody got fired in a major office position and someone new was hired and whatever. And he fucking ended up calling up Jim Cornette, like reacting to it about how, oh, this guy just got hired. Blah, blah. And Cornette's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it made him look like a complete asshole. It was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> Tommy got pissed off. Never talked to me again. But I knew what what message what <laughs> message code on the WCW hotline Tommy recorded messages for somebody else to listen to, and so I kept hearing news from Smoky Mountain Wrestling from Tommy Noy because I knew their fucking code and I was listening to their fucking I hacked their <laughs> fucking their their messages and I heard shit and to catch me because they 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 figured out oh he must be still stealing news from us because he's listening to what I'm recording to you so Tommy Noy faked scott armstrong's death in a car accident after a smoky mouth <laughs> wrestling show. recorded it and left it on there and i heard it and i'm like what the fuck scott armstrong died and i posted on rspw scott armstrong has died in an unfortunate car accident after a smoky mountain <laughs> wrestling event and i got busted for listening to their fucking message okay and i gotta then, find this now like Dave Shearer became the mediator between us saying, well, <laughs> technically, Prezak, you shouldn't have been listening to someone else's messages. And yeah, he probably shouldn't have said that Scott Armstrong was dead in a fucking car accident. But but it all happened because of the fact that we were given the WCW hotline fucking backdoor, <laughs> the West Interactive audio system. Okay. It, led, it uh, led to the downfall of all of us in RSPW. Okay, Pro so. Wrestling. The actual <laughs> post is not on Google Groups that I can find. I'm sure there's something with sheer fucking saying how I was in the wrong or some shit. Well, I could try to search for that next, but we do have this. SMW, Scott Armstrong News, all caps, false. <laughs> I would like to offer an apology to all readers of the rec.sport.pro wrestling news group regarding my post of May 19th, Chris. May 19th? Regarding mm -hmm. SMW news slash rumors. I've been informed through a tape message from Smokey Mountain. <laughs> a taped message on the WCW fucking hotline. <laughs> for Smokey Mountain Wrestling ring announcer and SMW hotline reporter Tommy Noe that Scott Armstrong had been killed in a accident on the night of May 16th. In the message, Noe stated that the news came from SMW referee Brian Hildebrand. <laughs> he did. He, he brought fucking Hildebrand into this shit <laughs> unknowingly. For quite I, a talk, while. I took that as serious information because I trusted Brian Hildebrand because he wrote for my fucking newsletter. For quite a while now. 
I had felt the same way about Noe, who had always been truthful and he had provided to me in the past. He had been. The incident fucking changed jerk. my opinion of him. Quote, never trust anyone, no matter how well you think you know them. End quote. Uh, I was informed this evening that the entire story was a blatant lie perpetrated by Noe to see if the rumor would spread. As far as I'm aware, Holdenbrand has no knowledge yet that Noe linked him to a false report of Armstrong. Yeah, that's death. right. I hope he fucking found out and there was a problem with their friendship at some point. And I'm certain he <laughs> will be thrilled when he finds out. It was my mistake to have faith in Noe's report and post it. And for that, I would like to apologize to my fellow RSPWers for my error just in judgment. I was told yes. that this was, quote, in retaliation for the April Fool's <laughs> Day joke posted by Bob Ryder back on April 1st about Bill Watts purchasing. Oh, it, World it was it was Bob wrestling. Ryder. I forgot Bob Ryder's involvement in all of this. Which no one had fallen for. <laughs> but there's a big, big difference between a harmless rumor such as that on April Fool's Day and a knowingly false report on someone's death. Signed, Dave Prezak. Uh, fucking Scott Armstrong, alive and well. <laughs> and there is a reply from Evan Schlesinger. <laughs> of course. Of course is. No taglines necessary. Notwithstanding, <laughs> be that as it may. Uh, and then from there. Uh, that one is believable, the other is not. He's basically agreeing with you there. Uh... <laughs> so that's my WCW hotline comment. It's amazing. <laughs> It didn't matter how much time they had you go through menus before finally getting to the meat on the bones of fucking Missy Hyatt's report or whatever the fuck, because we got it for free, and so did probably thousands of other people. But we were just <laughs> among the f stupid people to start using it as our own personal voicemail. Oh, man. There was also a guy who recorded one time on um, a number very close to uh, fucking Mean Gene or whatever's number, where he just said, he said that he, <laughs> uh, it was something along the lines of, uh, you know what I hate? Fucking boys to men. <laughs> and that was the whole message. <laughs> and so whenever I hear, you know what I hate, I'm always like, fucking boys to men? Whenever anyone says that. You got more. Oh, God. Tommy Noe's response, posted by uh, Dave Shearer. Uh, I am not taking sides in this debate between Dave Prezak and Tommy Noe. Tommy heard what was said about him and asked that I post this one rebuttal for him. It will be his only response, and it was told to Tim Whitehead. Okay, so wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Noe hears about the post, dictates it, dictates a response to Tim Whitehead, I don't, he was like Tommy wasn't on RSPW. No, I know, but then and then Tim Whitehead sent the Tashir to post on RSPW. Right. Okay. Uh, yes, I post this one revolver for him. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, this is Tommy Noe's response to Dave Prezak's allegations. <laughs> Tommy Noe told. Does he that, not wait in the, in the process of this? Let's find out if he actually acknowledges that he was recording shit on the WCW hotline. All right. Well, let's see. Tommy <laughs> Noe told me that he and Dave Prezak were friends and they often traded tapes that he discovered that Prezak was sending out false reports over the capital I enter, no space, capital N net. <laughs> and yet treating him, Noe, as the sort. Okay, so this is, this is written from Tim Whitehead's perspective. Yeah. Uh, as a consequence, Noe cut off all dealings with Prezak. Regarding the Scott Armstrong rumor, Noe told me this. Noe and an acquaintance have a, quote, message box on an 800-line called West Interactive Audio System. Yes, they even acknowledge in the fucking thing <laughs> that they're recording on the WCW Well, they outline. don't say that part. Well, but that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I know. This personal message box allows them to leave one another messages, which saves the expense of a long-distance phone call. Hmm, I wonder why there was an 800 <laughs> number there. Uh, Noe said that several messages he and his friend left <clears throat> one another somehow appeared on the internet. Shortly after, <laughs> neither he nor his friend had talked about the subject matter of this oh, the subject matter of their messages to anyone else. So they concluded that someone had obtained their the access code to their message box and was tapping into it and stealing their private correspondence. And I, I forgot to say this earlier. You really do have some Haman in you. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. Bill Strong, who he was recording the messages for, gave me like after he found out he like he found he found Tommy Noe falling for the April Fool's joke. I think it might have been. 
It might have been something stupid like Bill Watts being fucking. Yeah, just say that. No, Bill Watts <sighs> buying WCW. Buying WCW. Like he fe- that he fell for it. He thought it was so funny that he was like he felt bad that Tommy cut off communication with me, and he gave me the code. <laughs> to listen to their messages to hear the Smoky Mountain updates. So I was like, well, if Bill's going to give me the fucking password, I should hear them. Yeah, this is but his he fault. didn't. he obviously didn't smarten Tommy up to the fact that he gave me the password. And so to, to Tommy, I was like hacking into whatever they're well, about recording. That. To whatever. About that. None of us, the, bo- the bottom line, nobody should have been recording anything on the fucking WCW hotline. Well, according to Noe... <laughs> They suspected Dave Prezak. Oh, of course. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> because you gave me the fucking code. Anyway. He decided to try to catch him in the act by leaving a false message in the box to see if it turned up shortly thereafter on the net posted by Prezak. No, he said he phoned in a false message regarding Armstrong's death in a car accident to the message box. No one else knew of this besides Noe and his friend. Soon afterward, Prezak posted a report on Armstrong's quote unquote death on Prodigy. Okay, so you didn't post it on RSPW. <laughs> Just prodigy, I, don't, apparently. I don't remember. I don't remember. Apparently. I probably put it on XPW too. Uh, which Noe felt proved that Prezak had been tapping into his private message box and see- stealing info, which he then posted as his own on the net. Yeah. Noe said that the SMW crew is aware he did this, so Prezak won't be telling them anything they don't already know if he, quote, informs the Armstrongs about his message. <laughs> and, oh, we've got a reply from Dave Prezak. Hmm. Uh, you reply to a few of the points here. Seeing as no, he doesn't have net access. This is quite interesting. Oh, the finding out about the uh, false reports attributing them to you as the source. He said, uh, "And if anyone was providing him with printouts <coughs> or something the like, I challenge anyone to show a post where I report any info that I did not hear directly from him if he was credited in the post as the source." Uh, and then about the bulk of this, I've since cleared this up with the quote acquaintance. It seems as though he didn't inform Noe that he had. All he gave me the fucking password. Gave me their access code and yes. had invited me to listen to their messages for news. Mixed yeah. communication between he and Noe is what seems to have caused this thing to flare up. That said, let's put this thing to rest. I think the only thing anyone on RSPW cares about is concerning this whole thing is that Scott Armstrong is Scott alive Armstrong well. is alive <laughs> and well. Signed yes. DP and in your signature <coughs> now. New quote. Seagulls are pissing me off. Evan Schlesinger, May 6, 1995. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. All, All right. right. All right. Let's well, close this section now. Well, time for the anticlimax to close this segment. 